I'm about to make the little decoration for this button right here. Um, you know, I could have left it wood and I started to, but on the other hand, I, the ones I've done in the past where they've had all this shell inlaid around here, I make the whole button out of shell and I think that looks the best. So I've traced that opening onto a piece of paper and now I've glued that piece of paper to this piece of uh, abalone. Abalone, you can say it however you want to, everybody gets on me, no matter how I say it, somebody has to correct me. So it doesn't really matter to me. All I know is it used to live in the ocean. It was a piece of shell. And I'm going to saw it out with this little tiny jeweler saw. I probably should get my air turned on to blow the air out of the way. I will put on my dust mask because they say this shell, breathing that in is not good. I'll probably have to go get my air yet too, even though it's just really one circle cut is all I've got to make. Uh, first thing, break the blade, take two. Yeah, I knew better. I'm going to have to get the uh, little air to blow the dust away because almost instantly I can't see even that line on there. Take three. Take four. Broke another blade. Had to start again. It's in the wind. It's in the wind. That you're leaving me again There's no disguise It's in your eyes You can't fool me this time Before you up and leave me There's something you should know Well, it only took four tries, but I got her cut out. Whether or not it actually fits the hole now is a totally different story. Let's take a look and see if it fits. All right, let's see if it fits. Now keep in mind, I don't have, that's still got the paper on it there. And the answer is, no, it does not. The good news is that it's a little bit big. I can kind of see where I think it needs to be trimmed. And it looks like it's mostly this side here. So I'm gonna knock off just a little bit of this corner. I didn't think it was that sharp anyway, so I think that's, where the most of the problem is. I'm gonna do that with a file off camera. It's incredibly close to going in there now. Uh, got a little tweaking to do, I can see. But not too much, it's getting very close. Well, a little bit more tweaking off camera, and honestly, I don't think I can even get it out of there at this point, so I'm just gonna leave it in there and run, uh-oh. Maybe I did get it out of there. I hope I didn't break it. <laughs> Whew. That was weird. That means it's hitting on something there. There's still a little tiny bit of catching going on. I think what I'm going to do is try to scrape a little bit more of this bottom wood out of here. to Let it go in just a hair deeper. It's almost deep enough. Kind of like rocking in one little spot there. It's, I still think it's rubbing just a little bit right in that area. Oh, I think that's it. I think that did it. Wow, that's about as perfect as it's going to be on my end. Let me just make sure I got it tapped in there all the way that it'll go. I feel like there's just a teeny bit of difference, but yet on the other hand, there's paper on there too. So take that off and there's a few thousands. I think that's it. All right, I'm just gonna glue it in place. The CA glue will run down in there. I'm very confident that it'll glue it in place. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. At least it never has been. Just 
flexing it around to get the glue down in there really well. And now I'll spritz it with this and we should be done. That should do it. Now let's uh, see if we can get the paper off easy. I probably should have taken the paper off before I glued it because that probably just glued the paper even more. I can always sand the paper off. I ain't too worried about it, but it's going to be really pretty with that on there. All right, let's just take a little sandpaper here and hopefully sand the rest of it off. Just sit right down beside me Just once before you go Remember when we first met We had a love so fine Well, there you go. I think that's going to look real nice once everything gets cleaned up. I'll give you a better look at it here. T tilt it up for you. I think that's going to be beautiful. Well, I've reached a milestone. I've got all the binding done. I did that little extra detail there on the on the scroll now. Now, I've got to work on these body points. And I'm debating on still whether I want to put one across here or not. But uh, I've got to get this binding cleaned up. I think I see one problem area with the binding and it's just making me ill. I gotta be honest. It's it didn't go down in right here as well on the on this inside edge. I could probably smooth it out, but I'm afraid I'll thin it down so much that I might actually see the middle uh, binding there. I'm afraid I will if I smooth it down that much. Anyway, other than that, it's really nice. Um, at least I think other than that. Now that I say that, here's a spot right here that looks about the same. Doggone it. It's just really frustrating to work that hard and still have little problems. <laughs> it really is frustrating. You just work so hard on this stuff. And it just, no matter what, it wants to fight you and say, nope, I ain't gonna do that, you know, and just give you trouble. Well, I'm going to start cleaning it up, I think. I want to clean it up more before I get into these body points because I'm tired of this. It, plus, it feels bad, all the glue. You can feel the glue around the edges and stuff. And I just want to clean it up, and then I'll work on these last two details. And it may be a while before I get to those because it's going to take some cleanup. And also, I may want to readdress some of these binding places. It depends on what it looks like once I clean it up. Here we go. We bound, we love each other until the end of time. It's in the wind, it's in the wind that you're leaving me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. It's in the wind, it's in the wind That you're leaving me again There's no disguise, it's in your eyes You can't fool me this time I'm really aggravated. I'm tr cleaning all this up and when I was cleaning this up this piece chipped out right here. There were some other issues with it too on that little short piece so I'm now trying to take that whole piece out. Oh, I am so frustrated. I don't know if I can get the piece out now. It's going to be very difficult. It's glued in with tight bond and oh just frustrating. I could just cry. 
sad deal. But I gotta get it out of there. I don't know if I can get this where you can see it or not, but I'm gonna try really hard to cut it out of here. It's in the wind, 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 you win again. Let me chisel some of it out of there now that I've got it started well. I doubt it. But maybe I might be able to get it out quicker this way, but probably not. I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. You saw what I was doing there. I, the chisel sort of helps a little bit, but I may use the combination of the two, but it's, yeah. Very, very frustrating, and but it'll be a better job when I'm done, and I don't want to try to rush it. Well, it didn't take me too terribly long to cut it out all the way around there, maybe 15 minutes uh, all the way around here, but I've still got to get in here where the joint is tight, where the two pieces meet up, and got to get that apart. Uh, that may not be too easy. I don't know. That's going to be hard. I just hope I can get it done. I may have to do it with some really tiny Dremel tools, kind of like a dentist, and get in there and clean it out. I really don't know. It's not going to be easy. In this really tight spot here, I dug out one of my little tiny dental burrs that my dentist gave me years ago. Paul from St. Louis just gave me a bunch of dental burrs, and, and I would be using those, except that they're like a diamond uh, encrusted thing and they're more like grinding tools than they really are cutting tools. As you can see this actually has little cutting blades on it, really tiny cutting blades and those those do a better job on things like this especially on wood. Now on on um, you know shell and things the grinding is much better. Even as tiny as that is, it's not getting in there real, real good. <laughs> it's really a tiny spot. It's smaller than it looks. I made myself some real tiny little chisels, and I may have to get in here and do some chisel work. May have to find yet a smaller cutter. I've got some smaller ones, but I just don't know if they'll work at all when you get that tiny. We'll see. Okay, here we go. This this will show you. That's the size of that cutter. Very tiny little cutter. But look how little this one is. Yeah, it's uh, half the size of that one or smaller. So I'm gonna try this little tiny thing. I'm not even sure I have a holder though that will hold this because the shaft on this is even smaller too. I kind of don't think my collet's going to hold this, unfortunately. It would really be nice if it would. Oh, it almost holds it. It just, you know, you tighten this down and the collet just, well, that time there, no, it's still sliding a little bit. I don't know if I can go any tighter or not. Uh, it's still just a tiny bit sliding. Well, there's one option on this collet thing. It's not a good option necessarily, but it might work. And that is, if I can get this sandpaper slid into this collet here and sand it down just a tiny bit more, it's uh, not exactly the, the best option, but it's about the only option I've got. It might be just enough though, because boy, it was really close to holding it. And just a couple thousands would probably make all the difference. That might, that might do it, that seems solid. So, let's try that now. Well, that may 
have done it. Uh, probably have a little cleanup in here yet, but, but I might be able to clean that up now with the scalpel. The hands weren't hurting so bad, it wouldn't be quite as hard, but they're just aching and it's really hard to get anything in there that I can pry with. Now it looks like I got to the end of it there. Maybe if I can cut on the other side. It's not far from coming out of there, I don't think. Well, I'm going to keep working on that mostly off camera and get that little bitty piece out of there and then we'll go to the next step. As I was cleaning the binding up here on the edge, this chipped out also. So I took my razor saw and sawed right here on the body line joint and I'm going to replace this section of binding right here and butt it up tight there and hopefully you won't hardly see that seam when I'm done. It's the only thing that makes practical sense. Taking the whole thing off and, and that, you know, it would just be really difficult. So I'm just going to replace this section here. It wasn't deep enough anyway, so I can make this channel just a little deeper and that'll make a difference too. So it is what it is. It's not fun, but it's something I just want to do. I don't want to live with it the way it is. Well, it's time for that tiny drill again and get in here and get this all out of here. Well, as luck would have it, that one there keeps pulling me into the inside here, the way it's the rotation and Anyway, it's just got to be as hard as it can be. There's no doubt about that. It can't be simple. My hands are give out. I really, they really are. And I just want to get this done yet tonight so I can let this set up and I can move forward tomorrow, I hope. <music> of cleanup to do on this piece before I can start putting the piece back in here. I've got the bender heating up so it'll be just a few minutes and I'll be able to bend the new pieces that I need for these two replacement spots. The reason that chipped out was the binding didn't go in deep enough in a spot or two here and I'm going to see if I can't make that go in there deeper. That's as good as I can do. So now we'll see if we can put the piece back in there and make it match up or you can barely tell it. Well, I've got the angle cut on this to make that match back up and I've got the piece bent well enough to fit in here at least I believe I do and it matches up depth wise pretty well so really all I got to do is cut it off to length and now I say all I have to do that's really the hardest part of this replacement joint here because you definitely want this to fit as tight as you can make it fit and, you know, make it look good. I've marked it there just barely a strong length. I'm going to see if I can saw it off with this. Let's just see if it would happen to accidentally fit. It's a... Uh, going to be difficult at best to get it in there. It's just going to be a hair long, I have a feeling. Let's see if I bend it a little bit more and then poke it in there straight like that. I got just a little bit more to cut off here. So I've started taking a file and filing these uh, 
points down flat. I've marked it with a piece of binding so that they'll be approximately the same size as the width of the binding. And I've got lines there that I'm just filing down to. This is a double cut file. It's a smooth double cut file so it it gets wood, rid of the wood fairly quickly, but yet you can control it so that you get precisely down to your line. Someone said I should have used a Japanese saw to saw these points off, and yeah, you could probably do that, but there's not much room to saw. You, you'd be banging into this up here very easily. Uh, you know, you'd had to do it, of course, before you put the binding on. But uh, yeah, it's not that easy. Uh, and, and the second reason I didn't use a Japanese saw is I don't have one. And I don't really feel I need one, I'll be honest with you. I've never really felt like I was missing anything by not having one. When you stop and think about it, there's not very many flat places on an instrument. Everything's curved and a Japanese saw is great for sawing straight things, but it's not so great for curves. I'm just about there. I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. I'll have to clean up the little edges. I didn't get right up to the binding, uh, so I'll clean that all up with chisels and things and make it look real nice. And then I'll show you the next process. I shaped the first body point kind of rough shaped, and it's curly maple, as you can see, to match the binding. And it fits in here really well. So I think I might as well just get her glued in place. Then I'll have to come back in and shape that really accurately. That might be a trick, but I think I can do it. I've done it before. So now I gotta make the next piece. My friends, the frustration just continues on this. I really am frustrated. That's the best way I can explain it. I uh, had the fingerboard all done and all bound and real pretty and real nice. But when I lay it on here, I, and I knew it was gonna be tight, don't get me wrong. First, you know, I really thought I could swell the sides of this out a little bit, just, you know, the neck itself by wetting it down and heating it up and it would swell just a little. I just only needed a little bit. It's not swelling at all. Not at all. If I put it on here, there's going to be a teeny bit of a feel on both sides and I don't think I can scrape it. This binding is so thin, I don't think I can scrape it and make it come out smooth. It's just a nightmare. It really is a nightmare. So I'm taking the binding off of this one side here and I'm going to have to put it back on. And I thought I could save it, but I can't. It's not coming. It won't cooperate in that regard either. I tried heating it and everything and it's just breaking. And so I'm just not even going to worry about it and just tear it off and redo it. It just... It's just so frustrating. You know, I, like I said, I knew it was going to be really close, but I honestly thought it would be fine. Um, but no, why would it be fine? If it can be a problem, it's a problem, you know? And that's just the way it is. I got to take all this off. I could just go over to the sander and sand it off. I'm tempted to just do that. In fact, I think I will. Well, I don't know. No, I don't want to do that because I want to be able to control exactly how thick I am and I'm afraid if I do that with the sander, I'll go deeper than I expect um, before I'm ready. I'm going to knock this down with the sander eventually. It's just that I want to be able to measure it and be really controlled. Weather has caused one thing to swell and something else to get smaller. I don't have any idea. I mean, it could be something like that too because it felt like it was going to be tight but just be almost perfect. Now it's quite, this is quite wide compared to the neck. Uh, and it didn't quite feel that way before, so I don't know why. It just is. Nothing I can do about it now. Just got to take it off and do it over. I have to thin this board down just a little bit on this one edge. And yeah, that will throw my center off a hair, but it's going to be so minor. I mean, we're only talking a few thousands. Nobody's going to notice it. It won't, it won't be weird or make the thing play weird or anything. I only have to narrow it by probably five thousandths of an inch, maybe ten thousandths. 
and that's not much trust me I'm trying to do this without messing up my file here on the fret ends just like everything it's not cooperating we're in the middle of a major thunderstorm even had a tornado warning there for a little while uh, yeah it's quite a mess I'm ready to put this binding back on here now fortunately I had enough binding otherwise it would have really been a mess if I'd have had to make more binding let's see how well this works yeah it's still quite a thunderstorm no question about that just putting that in there to keep it flat because these fretboards don't like to lay flat when they're when you're gluing this binding on. And now I'm gonna make sure I've got all the binding pressed down in there as far as it'll go. That looks like that's pretty dang good. Now I'll try to uh, wedge this last little piece in here and get it in tight because it's right down here at the end. Um, not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that, but I'll figure it out, I guess. Just trying to find enough wedges and things to stick in here to force it into place. It looks, ah, oh, shoot, I had it, and then I had to go for one more little speck there, and it turned loose. Well, we'll let that set up overnight, and then I gotta clean it up on that one side, and then we're back to zero again, back to level. <laughs> we're not ahead, but we're back to even. Here's just a note about sanding and detailing this. As you start to sand this, you can see where the glue piles up. The sanding actually shows it up better than anything. So like right here, there's some glue. You can see I can just peel it off of there. Once you see it, you can get rid of it. It's hard to see it until you sand like that, and then you can see it. Like here's a bunch of it through here. So it's just, yeah, it's quite a lot of work. Uh, detailing this thing, it's gonna take me another whole well, I'll say another half a day to just detail it before I'm ready to put the uh, final coats of varnish on it. Oh my goodness, it just takes forever. You gotta be very careful with this so you don't scratch up what you got already. I just try to slide it up to the glue and lift up and it kind of picks the glue up off that finish because the glue doesn't stick to that finish all that well. Oh well, I just thought I'd show you that. Well, the uh, fretboard set up overnight, uh, the, bind the new binding, and uh, it turned out just fine. It looks good. I'm happy with it. Now I need to clean it up. Uh, in other words, this side here has been contoured to the frets. This side has not, so I have to file it all down in between each fret there. I'm not gonna show you this because I think I might have shown it in an earlier video or earlier part of this uh, construction. So anyway, that's how I do it. I just take a file and I file in between the frets and bring the binding down to the level of the fretboard there. Just kind of like that. Can you see that little notch in there? That's what it amounts to. I'll show you more later. Can you see that? That is a little piece of ebony that I turned down on my lathe and then held it between my fingers with sandpaper till I got it down to about 1 16th of an inch and that will be the side position dots that I'm going to put in the f fingerboard here. Yeah, that, that's not easy to turn down. Let's see how thick it is. It should be close. It's 64,000, 62 and a half I think is uh, a 16th. So it's actually a little thinner in some places. It's not, it's not a hundred percent consistent, which you shouldn't expect if you're doing it by hand like that, but uh, it's close enough, I think it's gonna work. 
this outer end is a little bit big, so I'm going to just see if I can spin it just a little bit right there on the end and cut that down just a tiny bit. I think that's going to be close enough. It should work for my purposes. I went over and drilled the holes. Um, I didn't film that part. That's okay. You've seen holes drilled before. And I am now going to put these in there and I guess I'll just use CA glue because I think that'll be fast and easy. So I got the CA glue in the hole, poke the uh, piece in there as far as I can get it in there I guess. Spritz it with a little accelerant and then just saw it off. And I'll continue doing that. So there's a look at the completion. Turned out pretty nice. In order to attach the fingerboard, I want to precisely locate it and, you know, because once you put glue on this, it'll slide just like, you know, just like ice. Uh, it, it won't stay still. It'll just do this when you put clamps on it and everything and Trust me. I know what I'm talking about there. It will slide so it'll never stay where you put it If it did it would be a miracle. So to avoid that problem the old-timers all use this method and I like this method myself. I think it's the best method. And that is you drive little tiny brads. These are little bitty brads. And you don't drive them very deep. You just drive them just in where they're, where they're stuck. Like you go into a, a thick part of the neck here. It's a little hard to do. But I like to just lightly start it like that. Then I hold this in my hand to, to absorb the shock. And I just drive it in about maybe a third of the length and it kind of bent over so I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. Hit it just one more little tap there. Straighten it just a teeny bit more. I'm going to drive another one on this side and into a fairly thick part of the neck here. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get it out to the edge. Okay, and then again I'll just hold it in my hand and drive it in there a little ways like that. It doesn't have to go very deep, just where it's solid, where it won't come out. Then you take your uh, side cutters. Now you notice your side cutters all have a little bevel in there. You lay them down flat. That little bit there will leave just a, a sharp little point right there. And I'll do the same thing again. I'll just take and lay these down flat, cut off that little piece. It leaves a nice sharp little barb there, just a little tiny thing hardly enough to matter about anything. Then you can align this, get it perfectly aligned where you want it. And I'm aligning it with this piece of bone. This is the 15th fret. And I'm aligning the edges so that they feel good. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my plastic mallet here and I'm going to tap this right above where I put the nail in. And while it's still in place, I'm going to tap it here. And that should have made an indention in both places. Then what I do is I take a real tiny bit and I drill just a little ways in there. Just enough to locate that. Because I don't want that in my way. I'm going to get me a... I'll find the right bit and then I'll show you drilling that. I found a little tiny wire drill that's the right size. And now I will just go in that little indention and drill it just a little ways. Doesn't need to be very much. I think that's going to be more than adequate. When you get them set in place you can feel it and you can tell that it, they're locked in. So that's what you want. Now I can put glue on there and clamp it and have the confidence that it's going to stay where I put it. That's what we want. Ain't no time like the present. Might as well get the glue on there. I 
I do want to make a good connection here and I do want to get a hundred percent coverage but this is not quite as critical as gluing on a bridge or something like that you know it, it doesn't have the same kind of stress now granted you still want a good connection because it does increase the strength of the neck I think just gluing it on one side should be sufficient for my purposes as long as you get enough glue on there I want enough to make a good contact but not so much that it just squeezes out everywhere I'll get it on there get it located I think I found the location there it feels like it so now we'll get the clamps on there Clamping things on round surfaces is always a little bit of a challenge. Trying to get them dead center to get the good force. That worked good. I seen the glue squirt out of the front there, so I know that worked. I'll get some more clamps and I'll show you what it looks like all clamped up. You know, trying to make some more progress on this. It's the weekend. It's Saturday, and I'm got you know the. Uh, fingerboard glued on there well and now I'm going through and cleaning up the glue squeeze out and things like that. I'm feeling the neck and just mainly going by feel and it's kind of round. I want it a little bit V round. Uh, not totally V but not totally round. Right now it's pretty round so I'm going to narrow it down a little bit make it a little bit more like a V. <laughs> quite large still. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is get out some measurements. I may have to go to a heavier file because I think this one's just not going to do it. It's a double cut but it's just not heavy enough to knock off what I need to knock off. I'll do some uh, work on that probably off camera primarily but you see what I'm doing and it's basically just going to be more of that maybe with a little bit rougher file and I'll show you the progress as I make it. Well, I've been working on this neck a lot off camera, and I really do think it's fine now. It's just about the right size. I've left it just a little bigger than a Lloyd Lohr mandolin neck. Uh, those are really, really tiny. And uh, I, you know, I don't mind the tiny neck, uh, but I left it just a little bit bigger. Uh, when I say a little bit bigger, you're probably about 30 thousandths wider uh, all the way down. So 30 thousandths is, oh, uh, you know, um, I don't know, maybe eight uh, thicknesses of a human hair, just to give you an idea, 80 thousandths. It'd be just about a sixteenth of an inch, a uh, little bit more than that, uh, wider down through here. And it's about, um, oh, 20 thousandths thicker through here, so that would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 64th of an inch. I mean, I'm just giving you a, a ballpark idea. It'd be a half a millimeter um, thicker this way and three quarters of a millimeter wider this way. So it's not much bigger, it's just a little bit bigger. 0.75 millimeter if that's the way you prefer to hear it. This uh, sander was given to me by one of my wonderful viewers that's a He's really good at 3D printing and printed that for me. Really appreciate that. It's perfect for getting up in a place like this, up underneath this uh, scroll and on the base of the neck there. This wood is not easy to sand, uh, as I, if you may recall from when I sanded the back. It took me three hours per side to sand the back. And that's pretty much constant non-stop sanding. I've been sanding on this for well over an hour yet, and I'd say I got another half hour at minimum to go, and that's sanding pretty much constantly just to get all the little scratches out of it. Very hard type wood, especially to sand. You you can't scrape this wood either. It just it curls up and it just gets fuzzy whenever you try to scrape it. Uh, there's, there's places on it you can scrape, but other places just gets fuzzy. 
It's gonna take quite a bit more sanding like this to get it all cleaned up. You know, you think you got it, but if you look at it really close, there's always little marks here and there. But boy, it is getting slick now. It is so slick, it's really hard to explain how slick it is. Anyway, I'm just doing all that. It'll bore you to tears watching me just do this and sand and sand and sand, and that's pretty much all I'm doing, just trying to get it all cleaned up. Then I, at once I get this all sanded up, then I'm gonna go back in detail and fix all the little spots that scratched off on the finish and things like that, and try to detail all that. Go ahead and finish this peg head. Then hopefully Monday morning, um, I'll be spraying this thing with the uh, final coats of varnish. That's what I'm hoping. I moved into the detailing stage now where I'm going back and fixing all the little scratch marks. You can see how the finish was scratched right here and here. So I just take just the least little amount of dye in my lid here and just in a very, very fine artist paintbrush. And in fact, it's a brand new artist paintbrush so that I know that it's gonna work really well. And I'm just barely touching these things. And then like where maybe the finish got scraped away from the binding just a hair, I clean it up like that. And then when it gets covered over with finish, I don't think you'll see it at all. I'm trying to stay right within the spot that was scraped also, and I'm trying not to get it out in the other areas. I think that helps it look better and not look patched. And if I happen to get a little bit on the binding, well then I'll just take a X-Acto knife and go back around it and scrape it just very lightly, like right there, it's just the least little bit. And I can just scrape it back off and clean that back up. It takes a little bit more scraping than it does with plastic, but it looks pretty good. And anyway, I just detailing it and detailing it and detailing it all over. And any place I can see the least little problem, I go back and clean it up with this. And so I got a lot more of that to do. I'll show you what it looks like when I get that all finished. Well, I put a little bit of the brown stain on the back of the peg head, and you can see there's a glue stain there. And didn't see that till I put the stain on there. The, uh, you know, people use black lights and things to show these up. I've tried black lights in the past and they haven't worked for me. I, maybe it's, maybe it's something to do with my color blindness. I don't know, but I can't. I don't ever see those spots till I put the dye on and then they show up pretty good. So here I'm gonna try scraping it off. Even though this is sanded, you know, it's still there. About the only way I can get a glue spot like that off is to actually scrape it off. And you can see how it, it pretty much scraped exactly in the pattern there. I'm scraping a little bigger than the pattern so I can make sure I get it all. up here on this area too. I don't see it now, so I guess that took care of it. Okay, now I'm going to have to be very careful staining these sides so that I don't get it on the binding like I did with the yellow there. It's going to take a lot of tedious work with a very fine paintbrush, so I'll do that off camera and just get that all stained. Well, my friends, that big day is finally here. You can see I've got my swivel hook on here to hang it up. Yep, we're going to be putting the final coats of varnish on this baby. Yeah. 
Finish goes one of two ways. It either goes easy or it don't. <laughs> and I you never know till I spray that first coat on. And you never know. And I don't know why there's a difference. Can't explain it. Been doing this for nearly 40 years. And uh, one time it'll just go as easy as pie. I mean, like, it's the easiest thing in the world. You think anybody could do this. The next time, not so much. So how will this one go? Since I'm trying to get it done by this Friday, <laughs> I have no guess, I have no clue of what's going to happen. But if it would just spray on here, and I could spray about two or three coats of the True Oil varnish on here, uh, and let it set for about two days in a row, I think we'd be ready to string it up. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Well, I'm sure the lighting is backwards for this, but uh, I would rather be shooting out here in the open, number one, and number two, I have to see what I'm doing. But uh, anyway, it's the big day for the uh, world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. We finally get to put some finish on this thing. Well, that, I should say the final finish, because we do have shellac on the body. Anyway, here we go. I've been testing the spray gun. I'm spraying true oil varnish. So let's give it a shot. I guess I'll start, maybe I'll start on the peg head. Okay, you only want to give it one pass. That looks pretty good. It's going on pretty well. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to hold it by this hanger probably I guess well before I started I mentioned that it can only go one of two ways either really nice or really bad I would call this really nice I I'll take that it it went really good I'm gonna go with that and we'll hang it up and let it dry for a few hours and take a look at it closer to make sure that it didn't run or anything. If you only spray one pass on it, uh, typically it doesn't run. But boy, if you spray a second pass, it's run city. I really like spraying this true oil varnish. I really do. I've tried all the different methods. This just goes on glass smooth when you do it. So... It may be this spray gun. This is a pretty good gun. It's, a De it's one of the old DeVilbis uh, spray guns. But it does work really well. I'm absolutely thrilled with the way it looks right now. Hopefully it'll stay that way. <laughs>